welcome back. I hope you're having a great day and I hope you're all well. It's Wednesday, so it's only a couple of sleeps till Christmas. So I hope you get everything you want for Christmas. There will be a Christmas update. So I've tried to avoid the Queen's speech. I don't want to nick any of her viewers. So we're going to go out at half six, I think, unless that clashes with anything else significant, but I usually post up at half six. So half six Christmas day, we'll have the Christmas update on Project TARDIS and we're gonna spray all the front end. So it's a bit I've really wanted to get round to finishing off because it's a horrible job. I hate paint prep work and that sort of thing, but it's always really nice laying the paint on if it goes right. So that'll be Christmas day. So hopefully you can join me, tune in. If not, catch up on another day. In today's video, we are gonna overhaul uh, the front suspension arms so I think you'll agree, they look pretty swish at the moment. All new components on there, fully overhauled, ready to go back on the car. Uh, we've got one sort of fully built up here, ready to go in the subframe. So today's video is going to be talking to you about how I refurbish these front arms, which might be useful if you've got to do some in the future. They're not that straightforward to do. So hope you enjoy today's video and uh, hope to see you again on Christmas day. Right, let's get this. Uh, this is uh, one of the front top arms on the suspension. So it has a couple of needle roller bearings in here, a shaft through the middle. There's no wear in it, but again, we're just giving this car a bit of a, kind of a light restoration, I guess. It's been sat around for lots. So, Let's have a look at the shaft. Or the pin, sorry. So this is a top arm pin. There is no discernible wear on it, but I don't know whether you can see, you can see marks where the rollers have been sat. And obviously there's very, very light pitting or rust on it, very, very light, but we're just gonna do them anyway. They don't cost much. They are a bit of a pig to do, but I think these are about 12 quid for a set with bearings, so might as well just do them while we're here. What's the point in trying to skimp? And these are a bit of a pain to change once all the subframe and everything's in the car. So these can be, getting these needle rollers out can be a little bit difficult. So I think the way I've done it before is you just break them to begin with, get all the little pins out, the little needles, um, and then I usually dremel through the casing until it's very, very thin and the casing usually just cracks in and you can usually just punch them out. So we'll give that a go.
So eventually, after a bit of faffing around, you get all these little needle rollers out. And that just leaves you with a casing inside. Don't know whether you can see that both sides, but yeah, you get all the needle rollers out. There is a lip inside of there, which you can fit a chisel up to from the inside, but the bearing casing is very weak. So if you start punching that through, because it's an interference fit, it just breaks off like here and it makes it even harder to get out. So we're gonna get the Dremel now and all we're literally gonna do is just Dremel down this side just until that casing gets really, really thin. Uh, sometimes they just crack, you can see them crack when they do, then it's really easy just to go in from the other side, just give them a little bit of knock and they come out. Now what you need, you need a really hard bit in the uh, Dremel. You need a carbide burr really, which is what one of these is, and that will cut through that uh, metal like it's chocolate. So I don't know how well this you'll be able to see that, but there's a thin, there's a groove cut up the middle. It's my French speaker. Groove cut up the middle. That should come out quite easily now. There we go. He's just marked that one very slightly at the back there, but that doesn't matter. Doesn't matter at all that. But as, you, as I was going backwards and forwards with the Dremel there, it actually just loosened up as I was doing it. So you can almost feel when it's gone all the way through. Right, let's just get these cleaned up. One arm down, one to go. So again, this probably doesn't need replacing, does it? But there is some rust and some pitting on the needle roller bearing surface area there, just where it's been sat. But again, just for the price of them, why not do them?
Right, and there's the second one done. Those ones come out very cleanly, just once you've had a bit of practice. I did scuff up the inside of that one a little bit, but it doesn't matter. As long as the new bearings go in and they're an interference fit, so they're not gonna move around, that's absolutely fine. But yeah, they come out quite easily that side. So we're just gonna dunk these in, uh, in some gunk now overnight and they'll be ready to clean up and then ready for paint. Right, apologies if I skim through that a little bit quickly. I tend to do that sometimes just because I'm used to doing stuff. So I always think I should show in a little bit more detail sometimes and viewers do regularly ask for it. So I was using a carbide burr there on a mini die grinder. Um, that, that These carbide burrs are very, very, very hard metal, much harder than the material you're cutting through. And um, yeah, they'll they'll just cut through metal almost like it's butter um obviously you want some decent quality ones but yeah carbide burr that's what i'm using there you're basically putting the carbide burr down the side and you're cutting through the outer part of that casing and then through the inner all the way through like that what you're looking to do is cut through until it gets really really thin I've gone a little bit far through this, so that would have eaten into a little bit of the material on the arm, but only a very slight bit, nothing to really worry about. But obviously you need to be careful not to gouge too deeper. But if you do it gently and you keep going, what you'll find is this will, you'll see a crack open up in here, or sometimes what can help is just to go through it backwards and forwards a few times, get it to the point it's really thin, and then just tap on this outer casing and then that will crack it down the middle. Once it's cracked, it's easy to get out. On the back of here, you can get a screwdriver through from the other side just to tap that and they'll come out really, really easily once they've either cracked or once you cut through them. But the best way to do it, if you're quite skillful, which I'm obviously not because I did go all the way through, is just to get it really thin, tap on that outer casing and it will crack. And once it's cracked, it's really, really easy to get out then. So hopefully that helps you out as i say it's quite a difficult job if you don't know the technique but once you know how to do it once you've got the right tools it is quite easy and there we go so there's our lovely arms sitting in a tub of gunk we'll leave that in there for a day or so wipe them off and they'll be good for painting Last bit, all we've got to do now is press in the new needle roller bearings. There's a few different ways of this. I'm gonna show you the way I do it. So we've got everything we need here laid out for the front upper arm, the knuckles, the suspension donut, the suspension cone, and we've got the kit. So this is basically what you get in the kit. 
you get a new pin, new washers for either end, new rubber seals, You do have to be careful because these washers are sided. So the thicker washer from memory, trying to think now, goes at the front and the thinner washer at the back. Double check that. I can't remember. It's one of those things when you put it on the frame, you will realize. <clears throat> um, obviously you get a new pin and you get the two new sets of needle roller bearings as well. And if you look, carefully at these they are they go in one way so one end of them is rounded off more than the other so that's the end which goes into the arm and just to fit them like I say pretty straightforward and simple I'm just going to use the threaded bar method which is what I use for doing like rear radius arm bushes when I've got to press them in um, yeah it's just a bit of M10 bar with some big washers on the end I actually use some of the old radius arm washers just to strengthen it a little bit. So yeah, it's just really simple. Their arms all nicely cleaned up and painted. Um, they are green for no other reason other than I, I had some green hammerite paint. <laughs> so there's no point buying a new pot of black. We're just gonna put a bit of grease inside where the bearing goes. It's an interference fit, so you've got to pull them in. So, <clears throat> first thing we'll do, give it a quick tap to get it started. Both sides, like I say, make sure you orientate them the right way round. Might just grab a little mallet. You might, I just wouldn't go too mad tapping them in because I've done it before and like I say, learn off my mistakes. I've put them in with a hammer before and then the needle rollers, the pin felt horrible afterwards and I ended up taking them out and replacing the bearings. I think it's just really easy to damage the end of there and then the rollers don't turn properly. Unfortunately, this bar, I've got to screw that screw all the way down to there. <laughs> um, bit of universal this, because I use it for doing the rear radius arms as well, so it needs to be longer. Pretty straightforward now, we're gonna do just tighten it up. Make sure it pulls them in evenly. I'm a bit of an umpty, I bet you watching this was thinking I'm threading that screw all the way down there. Did I need to? I did need to do that. I'm thinking I could have just taken it off the other end, it would have been quicker. I'd have still needed that down that end though. So that is our bearings in now. They should be flush with that outer edge. And if you're using the washers, it'll pull it flush anyway. It'll just tighten up, get really tight to the point you can't tighten it anymore. So we can now put our pin in and the, the, you should feel the pin should turn nice and freely. And now all we've got to do is fit our washers in the correct way round. So I'm just thinking that will be on that side of the car, bump stop at the back. So that means a thick washer at this end do just check the washers, like I say, there's a thick and a thin one, make sure you get them the right way round. They also have like a spiral pattern on the inside as well, that's for the grease, so that goes in towards the inside.
So, there we go. New uh, radius arm pinning, new bushes or new roller bearings. Uh, just check you get the washers the right, right way round. As I say, I have a thick one and a thin one. Pretty sure the thick one goes at the front, but do just double check. Um, don't forget to put the grease nipple in, which we do now. Rather annoying, actually, that comes as a kit, but it doesn't come with a new grease nipple, which is frustrating. Luckily, I did have some spare kicking around, but I'd always recommend changing the grease nipple because they get blocked up and they stick. So there we go, new grease nipple on there. Uh, we'll fit a new shock absorber pin as well. Bit of grease, stop it seizing up in the future, like they do. New knuckle, and then we've got our suspension cone, and then it'll be a donut, and that's basically our whole front top arm assembly now built up, ready to go back on the subframe when I put it back together. So there we go, hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you do. And um, yeah, check back again soon.